Are you new to Galaxy of Heroes and completely overwhelmed by the amount of characters and content? With almost 200 characters, over 50 ships, and more than 12 game modes, being a beginner in this game is tough. Where do you even start? Well, in the words of Obi-Wan Kenobi, That's why I'm here. I'm the Star Wars guy, and my goal today is to simplify everything this game has to offer and show you the most direct and efficient path to one of the most powerful characters in the game. Let's get started. This beginner farming guide is centered around one single goal, unlocking galactic legend Sith Eternal Emperor as early as possible. As one of only four galactic legends at the time of this recording, Sith Eternal Emperor is one of the best tunes in the entire game. And while some will argue he's the least impressive of the four GLs, no one will argue that he's the easiest to unlock. So he will be your primary focus. All that said, the requirements are still quite steep, but I'm gonna break everything down, show you where every character is located, how to unlock them, and in what order. First, let's take a look at the 15 prerequisites you'll need to unlock the event. At Relic 7, you'll need Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader, Jedi Knight Anakin, Darth Sidious, and Sith Marauder. At Relic 6, you'll need Count Dooku and Grand Admiral Thrawn. At Relic 5, you'll need Admiral Piet. At Relic 4, you'll need Director Krennic and Darth Maul. Finally, at Relic 3, you'll need Royal Guard, Grand Moff Tarkin, General Veers, and Colonel Stark. You'll also need one ship, the Imperial TIE Bomber, at six stars. Before you go for any of these characters directly, you first need a solid beginner squad that will open the doors for many of these prerequisites. And for that, you're going to be using a team of Phoenix Tunes. Phoenix are one of the best options for your first team because, one, they're probably the easiest squad to grind in the entire game. Two, they lead to not one, but two of the legendary characters on our Galactic Legend list. Three, they're a decent early squad arena team, which is great for your crystal income. And four, they're a great early Galactic War team, which is great for lots of reasons. Needless to say, we'll be grinding them first. The primary Phoenix squad and the first characters we're going after are Hera Syndulla in the leader slot with Ezra Bridger, Kanan Jarrus, Garaz Eberelios, and Chopper. You'll be able to farm Hera and Ezra with Cantina energy very early on. Hera is on Cantina 1F, Ezra is on 2B. Farm Hera first because her leadership ability is essential. And it's a good thing grinding them will give you a decent amount of Cantina tokens because Chopper is in the Cantina store and that's where you'll be grinding him, while Kanan and Zeb are in the Squad Arena and Galactic War stores respectively. Even better, since the game introduced accelerated farming, this farm will go literally twice as fast as it used to and it was always pretty quick. Now you're gonna wanna take some time and grind all five of these characters to seven stars and gear level nine plus. Doing so will allow you to unlock Thrawn and Palpatine at seven stars. Since you won't be using any normal energy to farm your Phoenix squad, that frees up a ton of resources to begin working on some other tunes. The first characters you will encounter as you work through the light and dark side nodes will be Count Dooku, he's 1C on both, and Royal Guard, 1D on the light side and 5F on the dark side. Count Dooku also appears on Cantina 6G, but if you stay focused, you should be done with him by the time you get there. So use your normal energy and begin farming these two first. Next, check out the Achievements tab from your Objectives window and make a note to try to accomplish every task you can that will reward you with Darth Vader shards. This used to be the only place you could get him, however, these days you can find him in the Fleet Store at random. If you don't have the Fleet Store yet, don't panic, it unlocks at level 60. And while we're on the topic of stores, in the Squad Arena store, after you get Kanan to 7 stars, start farming Grand Moff Tarkin, he's doubly useful because of his capital ship, the Executrix, and then Darth Sidious. In the Fleet store, after you get Vader to 7 stars, start farming Darth Maul when you see him. And once you unlock the Guild store, start farming Colonel Stark and Darth Maul when you see them. At this point, all your Phoenix should be complete, and make sure you're going in the Journey Guide and completing the Thrawn and Palpatine events as you go, and you should be well on your way to the Sith Eternal Emperor. With Ezra and Hera done, you once again have access to your Cantina energy, and that'll all go towards Sith Marauder on Cantina 6E. After you're done with Royal Guard and Count Dooku, start working towards Jedi Knight Anakin. He's on light side 5C. If you finish Sith Marauder and you're still not done with Little Annie, you can speed him up by using his Cantina node 7G. After Anakin, we're done using Cantina for characters, so your goal there is to complete all of the tier 8 battles as soon as possible, 
and pour all of your energy into grinding relic materials from nodes 8C, 8F, and 8G. You will need a lot of relic materials, so get to work. Up next for your normal energy is General Veers on light side 4C and 6C. Do both of these at the same time, plus some refreshes, and he should go by in a blink. After Veers, grind Piet from light side 6B, and then Director Krennic from light side 9D. Finally, bring it all home by grinding the Imperial TIE Bomber from dark side 5A. Remember, this ship only has to be 6 stars for the event, but I'd recommend getting it all the way to 7 stars since you'll likely be using Thrawn or Tarkin's capital ship and fleet. Speaking of fleet, you don't want to completely neglect it because, while it doesn't directly affect the Sith Eternal Emperor farm too much, it will speed up the process as well as granting you access to farming important Zeta materials. With that in mind, I recommend farming the Ghost and Phantom 2 to put your Phoenix to good use. You'll also need two other Rebel ships to get access to Thrawn's capital ship, which is worth it. Any Rebel ships will do. But perhaps the most important part of Fleet is farming Zeta ability materials. To get these, you will need to 3-star at least Tier 3 of the Ship Ability Materials Fleet Challenge. This is where Tarkin's Executrix comes in handy because it's the capital ship you will need for this event. You'll also need any six ships at five stars or higher to gain access to tier three. Note, this challenge is only available on Mondays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and you are guaranteed one Zeta ability mat every time you complete or sim this challenge for a total of six a week. This really adds up. Zetas are also permanently available in the fleet store for 2,000 tokens, and it's where you should spend all of your fleet currency after completing Vader and Maul. At this point, you will have every character for the event at 7 stars, and you should be hard at work gearing them to gear 13 and then pouring the relics on. So it's worth considering at this point how you plan to use the Sith Eternal Emperor. At the time of this recording, there are several different team comps, but the most popular is Sith Eternal Emperor in the leader slot, with Sith Empire Trooper, plus the Sith Triumvirate, which is Darth Treya, Darth Sion, and Darth Nihilus. Consider farming these tunes in the background while gearing up your event characters. While Treya is only grindable from completing the heroic Sith raid with your guild, the other three are available on nodes. Even if you don't use them in your main squad, the Triumvirate is a useful squad that is great to have. Now, in the interest of keeping this guide as focused as possible, I'll refrain from diving into every possible Journey Guide character and their paths. Instead, I recommend you take a look at my most recent Galaxy of Heroes character ranking list and think about which Star Wars characters are your favorite and make your own choices. As we wrap up, I wanted to end this video with some general tips and farming advice for any new players who may not know or old players who may need to be reminded. First, the best way to think about farming efficiently in the beginning stages of this game is like a tree, from the top down. Start with your goal, then work backwards to see what you need to do to achieve it. This is also just good advice for life. Second, utilize your favorites by adding any characters you're working on to your favorites list, but don't let it go over two rows long. This will help you stay focused. Start by favoriting your Phoenix characters, then the 14 tunes for your Galactic Legend. Next. Always prioritize grinding stars first, then gear, and level up your tunes as you have the credits. Try to keep your characters relatively equal in power. For example, it's better to have a group of 5 star gear 7 tunes than it is to have one 7 star gear 12 with the rest at 2 stars and gear 1. Now at the bottom of each store there is a button that says refresh with a countdown. When that timer runs out, the stores will reset and new random characters will appear, where possible. I advise you set an alarm for when the stores refresh so you don't ever miss any special characters that spawn there randomly like Darth Vader and Darth Maul in the fleet store. Another tip, since you're going after Phoenix, you may find yourself struggling to complete some of the dark side battles early on. The easiest way around this is to use powerful allies. If you don't have any allies or aren't sure where to get them, feel free to join my Discord server where we have an entire channel dedicated to ally codes with tons of people who would love to help you. The link is right here and also in the description below. Early on, you're going to find yourself running annoyingly low on sim tickets at some point. This is a temporary shortage that everyone goes through. After you unlock fleet at level 60, you'll forget you ever had this problem. However, the best way I've found to accelerate yourself through this shortage is to purchase them from the crystal store. Now I know a lot of veteran players are going to gawk at that advice, but trust me, it works. Besides, the crystal investment is quite low. Other than that, you should spend your crystals on energy refreshes while farming tunes. It makes everything go much faster. And finally, I have to talk about the hyperdrive bundle. While this is primarily a free-to-play guide, I would be remiss not to mention the Hyperdrive Bundle. At $99.99, it's not cheap, but is packed with value. 
Right from day one, you'll be able to unlock seven of the 15 characters needed for Sith Eternal Emperor, plus the entire Phoenix faction at five stars, level 80, gear eight, and ability level five. Simply put, it will greatly speed this whole process up. So if you have the cash to burn, or you just want to help financially support this game, I recommend it. Well, there you have it. I know it's a ton of content, but follow these guidelines and you'll be up and running in no time. I'm the Star Wars Guy. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe below for more Star Wars content every single day. Do it. And I'll see you in the next video.